Hey guys, this is Eli and welcome back to another Minecraft video. And in this video we're going to be taking a look at a new design for a programmable item splitter. Now, item splitters are redstone contraptions that typically take items from one hopper stream and split them into two hopper streams, and they usually do this in a ratio of 50-50 or 1 to 1. Now, a programmable item splitter follows the exact same concept with the exception that we can program in the exact ratio that we want to split our items by. Now, just before we start, the design I'm going to showcase in this video was primarily built for splitting items in a ratio of 2 to 1 and above. Now, if you're looking for a 50-50 or 1 to 1 item splitter, then this design will also work for you. However, it's not going to be as fast and efficient as some other designs out there. But don't worry too much, you are in luck. I put out a video several weeks ago on a few designs for 50-50 item splitters. So if that's what you're looking for, then I will put a link to my video in the top right of the screen. So you might be asking yourself, why would I want a programmable item splitter? To answer this question, if we just pop into my single player series, you'll see in front of us we have a windmill, and inside that windmill we have an automatic wheat farm. Now in here there's a villager, he's going around plucking all the wheat, and we have a network of minecarts underneath which actually collects all this wheat ready to store. Now this thing generates a ton of wheat, a lot more than a typical storage room could handle. So what I want to do is I want to take about 90% of this wheat and I want to store it in a local storage silo. And then the other 10% of the wheat I want to send over to our main storage room just so we can have it there in case we need to bake any cakes or trade with villagers. Now this is a perfect example of where we might need a programmable item splitter because firstly we don't want a 50-50 split, we want a 9 to 1 ratio. And then secondly, if we find we're getting way too much wheat sent into our main storage room, we can change this ratio if we want to maybe 10 to 1 or 11 to 1 until we find that perfect balance of items being delivered. To build the programmable item splitter, you want to start off with a hopper line in roughly this shape. Now, it doesn't need to look exactly like this, you can tailor it for your own systems. Now, start off with a block coming out of this middle hopper. You want to do a comparator on top of that block facing outwards. From here, do another solder block into this comparator. Then you want to do a dropper on the face of this block. This goes straight into a hopper. Now, underneath, we want to take a couple blocks, so just come down to and then do one more just here. We want to do two comparators on these blocks facing upstream, do two more solder blocks coming out of these comparators, and then we want two more comparators on the top facing downstream. Now from here we want to do two hoppers facing into each other against these blocks, so place them like so, and then do two more solder blocks on the top just here. Now over here we want to do one solder block against this hopper, you want to do a half slab just here, two more solder blocks just here, and then we want to come down one and over one as well. And then one more block just here. Next up, we want to place a comparator on top of this block facing downstream, and then do a piece of redstone dust here, 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 and here. We want to do a redstone torch just there, and then finally a repeater just here. Moving around to the other side, you want to place two solid blocks against these comparators here and here. Place a redstone torch on top of that block, do one more block on top of the torch, and one more torch just there. Now take two blocks coming out here and then one more block against this hopper. Place a repeater on top of this block and this repeater gets set to three ticks. Do a piece of redstone dust here, here and here and then one more on top of this block here. Now we just want to sever this cross connection so place another block here. Next up you want to come down to the underside and we want to place two hoppers facing into each other and they need to be against this block here. Next up, we want to take a comparator output from this hopper, so come out one, come down one, take out this block, and place a comparator just here. Now this goes into a solid block. You want to do a torch on top of that, another block on top of that, and then a torch just on the side. Next up, we want a half slab just here, one more solid block just there, and then a piece of redstone dust on the half slab. Now come around to this side over here, we want to do a solid block against this hopper. We need to do two more blocks down here, and then two more pieces of redstone dust here and here. Once you've completed all of that, then it's finally time to put some items inside your dropper and hoppers. So if we just start off with the dropper, this is where we get to program in the ratio of items that we want to split. So if we want to split things in a ratio of 3 to 1, then simply place in 3 items into the dropper. If you wanted 5 to 1, then you place in 5, 7 to 1 you place in 7, and so on. Now place a single item into this hopper, 
And then moving down to the two hoppers on the underside, you just want to place a non-sackable item into this hopper here. So something like a boat or a minecart, as long as it's non-sackable then it should work. Now just in case you're not math savvy, a ratio of 3 to 1 means for every 4 items that come into the system, 3 of them will get sent into this hopper and 1 should get sent into this hopper. So if we had 5 to 1 then for every 6 items we get 5 in there and 1 in there, 7 to 1 then we get 8 coming in, 7 in there and 1 in there and so on. And we can actually just do a little test just now, if we just take 4 redstone dust and we throw it into this hopper we should get that perfect 3 to 1 split. So there's our first three, and then we should get one under here, perfect. It's also worth pointing out that this design should work for both a steady stream of items through your hoppers and a slow stream. So we can actually simulate a slow stream here. If we just place in four items and we do them one at a time, then we should still get that perfect three to one ratio. And this is basically simulating something like a wheat farm or an iron farm that delivers its items much slowly through hopper lines. So we just check here, we should have three in here and one in here, perfect. So this should work under all conditions. Now just to give a brief explanation of how this works, now do bear with me, it may get a little bit complicated, but hopefully you should understand it by the end. And if you do want to skip this part, feel free to, it's probably very boring for some people. Now just before I talk about the circuit, I need to cover a key concept in Minecraft to do with hopper streams. Now as mentioned previously, there's really two types of hopper streams. The first is a steady stream, and this is really when you have one item per hopper, and they're moving from hopper to hopper with no gaps in between. So this is a very predictable system, you know there's one item per hopper, and you know it takes exactly four ticks for this item to move to the next one. Now the other type of hopper stream is a slow stream. And this is really when you have lots of gaps between your items. So it may be if you were just adding in one item at a time to a hopper, or maybe you have something like an iron farm or a wheat farm that delivers, say, three wheat, and then several seconds later you get 10 wheat, and then a few seconds later you might get five. So it's very much random, very unpredictable. Now it turns out item splitters are very easy to do for steady streams because they're so much more predictable, but they're really difficult to get done for slow streams, and it's even harder to get them to work for both steady and slow. Now for a slow stream you need all sorts of memory circuits because say you're doing a ratio of 3 to 1 and you count those 3 items coming in, you need to remember that you've counted 3 items, and you need to remember that that 4th item is going to get sent to a different path. You also need a splitter that's self-resetting, so once it counts as three items, it needs to reset back to zero, so it's ready to count another three. But the problem we have here is when it resets back to zero, you need to make sure that fourth item, if it's gonna come after the reset, you need to make sure it's not gonna add towards the counter, because if it did, then it would go back from zero to one, and it would think that it's counting three all over again. So there is a lot of things that have to go on in order to get this to work. So if we just take a look at the system here, we have our main comparator, and this counts the items coming through this hopper. So when they're inside here, they create a pulse which basically pushes items from this dropper into this hopper. So this is our counter here, and this will count from three down to zero. So these items will get pushed into this hopper. This hopper is locked by default, so they won't go back. And when the dropper is empty, this comparator will turn off, this one will turn on, and that allows this item to push from this hopper into this one and stick around there for a while. Now when that happens, this comparator turns off, this one turns on, this one turning off will actually unlock this hopper, which pushes our boat into this hopper here, and this one turning on will unpower this torch. Now when this torch unpowers, the items inside this hopper will be allowed to move back into the dropper, so this is our self-reset circuit. And at the same time, this torch will turn on, which basically powers along here, and it locks this hopper, preventing any other items from going into our system. And this is essential because obviously when we're resetting, we can't be doing any counting. We need to pause the whole thing until this thing is fully reset. Now at the same time, when this boat moves into this hopper, this powers down this torch, powers up this torch, and it actually locks this dropper. So by locking this dropper, this is what allows the fourth item to come in and basically not add towards the counter. So this should stay three the whole time and the fourth one should just move along here. Now we have this torch here and we also have this comparator. This is actually an aura gate and this powers this uh, repeater which locks this hopper. So for the most part we always have this comparator turned on because for three of those four items we have the boat inside 
inside this hopper. So because that comparator is on, then this hopper tends to be locked. Now when that boat moves away, this comparator turns off. When the fourth item is inside this hopper, we get this torch turning off. And that's the one time that this one will unpower and it will allow that fourth item to actually move down to this system here. But when that fourth item does move down and this torch turns off, this uh, wire actually turns off, which unlocks this hopper and the boat is allowed to move back to here. So it's basically a little smart circuit with a few different uh, you know, pieces of kit inside that allows this whole system to work. And having this repeater on three ticks seems to be the perfect number to get it all to work. It actually works for three ticks or four ticks. So I guess if you were experiencing lag, you may want to try this on four ticks just to see if that helps your system. But for the most part, I've tested this in a single player. I've tested it on a server. Three ticks seems to be working great. Well, if you managed to make it this far, then congratulations. You did a pretty good job. Now, if you do have any questions on how to build this or how does it work or whatever, then feel free to head down to the comment section and let me know. I'm more than happy to answer your questions. And of course, if you like this video, please do hit that like button. And if you want to see more of my tutorials or my single player series, then please do subscribe. I've been Eli. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.